Well, hello, everybody. My name is Sandy Aguilar, and I am with Engineering for Kids. I actually have a PowerPoint, but we don't have to go into it since almost putting you on a 10 minute, 10 minute time frame. Um, so I want to talk a little bit about what it is that we're doing. And I assume, since everyone here is into technology, everybody knows the word STEM, correct? How many of you guys have never heard the word STEM before, or you have no idea what STEM is? Awesome. I've gone into schools, and believe me or not, even the teachers don't know what it is. It's so horrible. Now, so STEM is science, technology, engineering, and mathematics. And what we do at Engineering for Kids is we've been around since 2009 in the United States. Here in the Valley, we've been here for one year. As of November 5th, we'll be here for exactly one year, and we're actually going to be opening up our center. We're located in the McAllen area, but right now we've been... Uh, housed out of certain partner schools around, across the Rio Grande Valley. We have a little bit over 2,000 students. Now, we do teach um, science and math while focusing on the six-step engineering design process. Now, for those engineers in the room, I know there's eight steps, but we went ahead and broke that down into six. All of our curriculum is aligned to state and national standards. Now, the important piece of why we decided to bring this down to the Rio Grande Valley is because as of this year, eighth grade students are now required to declare a career endorsement at the end of eighth grade to follow them through high school. Um, there's other countries that already do this here in, in Texas. We just started doing that this year, um, and it falls under House Bill 5. Now, these endorsements, there's five. The very first one that's pushed is, of course, STEM, uh, which falls anything in the science, anything in technology, engineering, or math. Now, in public education, most students don't get that exposure to STEM curriculum until sixth grade if they're at a middle school or seventh grade if it's just a traditional high school, if they're lucky, um, because of budget and because of, you know, districts going with different um, curriculums or focusing more on reading and math, they really are affecting and, and, and creating so much damage to students. So what we do is we start them as early as pre-K. Now in, in school districts right now, fifth grade students and eighth grade, fifth grade students and eighth grade students test for the national or a, a standardized test, which is the STAR test. Um, how many of you guys are educators in this room or you know a little bit about you know, the, the state exams and everything that they need to test. Um, I just, we looked at the, before, prior to bringing engineering for kids, we looked at all of the data in a fifth grade, and we were able to see the difference between how reading and math scores drop every time a new test is implemented. For instance, in fifth grade, the science is, or in fourth grade, the writing is implemented, and then in fifth grade, that science is implemented, and then again in eighth grade. Right now, the schools and, and the data that we've been gathering, where we've been implementing and embedding our curriculum, they are scoring three times higher than those schools that are not using our curriculum, because of course they're having that um, exposure versus the ones that are not. Um, we do focus on pretty much any type of engineering you can possibly imagine. So we have um, chemical engineering, civil engineering, industrial engineering, electrical, petroleum, marine, robotics, electronic game design, um, computer engineering, and all of that, again, is from four years of age to, eight, to 14, which is eighth grade. We do stop the curriculum at eighth grade because most high schools, by law, they're required to have some type of STEM curriculum to follow through with those endorsements now under House Bill 5. Now, um, you know, looking just at regular data and statistics across the nation, a student who is exposed to STEM curriculum by eighth grade is three times more likely to want to pursue a career in STEM when they go on and seek their post-secondary. One of the really neat things that I want to do here in the Valley, um, not just spread, you know, STEM curriculum across, but really engage the females just because looking at that statistic, only 16, I think 68% of females in fourth grade will show interest in math and science, but yet only 16% of engineering students are females. Um, so that is one thing that we try to focus a lot when we do go into our, our schools to recruit as many female students into our programs. Um, 
here as um, almost kind of going through the PowerPoint is just really a little description. If you go back a little bit to the ones, the engineering. So we have, you know, the different uh, engineering focus areas and what it is that those students are doing in, in our particular lessons. So if you go a little bit more, I think it starts with civil. Yeah, so yes. So we do run, or you go to the other one, please. So how we work right now is um, we're an after school enrichment program. Personally, there's a couple of schools that we're partnered up with and they handpick those GT students. I hate when they do that because the GT students are gonna be fine with or without us and it's always those lower economic students who we wanna push towards a field in STEM and hopefully they go off and become engineers and come and change the community, right? The whole movement. The way that we do work when we do go into after school programs we're with the students for an hour to an hour and a half, in some cases two hours because we do since we are aligned with state and national standards, we do qualify for federal funds. So many of the campuses that we're partnered up with, um, there's grants. Um, I've been doing a little bit of grant writing, so we've been getting a couple of grants and then we partner up with the schools um, and the Boys and Girls Clubs and the Girl Scouts and the Homeschool Association. So we have a variety of students all across the valley. Um, our lessons, again, they do go for four to eight weeks per program. So. If they sign up for us and they do just civil engineering, it's gonna be anywhere between four weeks to eight weeks for the entire program, depending on the time. Um, we do also workshops. Um, we try to add STEM in pretty much anything, even down to birthday parties. Um, you know, we've themed parties where we pull lessons from our chemical engineering and then we theme it to the Frozen, which was very popular this past summer. And the girls, and that was actually a girl, so it was girls in STEM. And we pulled um, some of the chemical engineering and they made fake snow, they made ice cream, and then we just themed it into the Frozen. Um, you know, and it was a really neat way to kind of show them that there's other things other than just having candy in a regular birthday party. We did more of an educational birthday party. So it's really, really neat. Um, the civil engineering, um, we actually have, in a, another reason why I was so excited to come out here is because we are looking, we're always looking for, you know, interns or, you know, people that are looking for part-time. I do, we do require that you have a strong math and science background obviously, because we want our kids to get the most out of math and science. Um, but we have a couple of staff that are actual civil engineers, or a lot of engineering, or fresh graduates out of UTPA. Um, they're our current teachers right now. Um, the, so the civil engineering, the kids are building skyscrapers, bridges, uh, roads. Um, there's one particular one that I really like. We also like to invite the community um, so we're always also looking for partners that would want to come and participate in, in certain of our programs. For instance, we have the Engineering of Cities, which focuses a lot on civil engineering. And what we do, the kids go and they pretend to be civil engineers. They build a city literally from the ground up. And then we'll invite somebody from the community to come and talk to them. Um, I know that we're just wrapping up one of our partner schools here in the Edinburgh area. And I believe his name is Mr. Ramiro. What is the city manager? Do you guys know? Ramiro? Gar is it Ramiro Garcia? Or I can't remember his name, but he's going to come out and be the judge um, and talk to the kids about what it's like to be you know, a, 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 a real city planner and a day in the life of and all the different uh, components into putting together a city and if they go off and become civil engineers, which is, of course, what we want. We want to inspire the next generation of engineers because there's such a shortage in the United States. We no longer want to have to outsource all of these jobs. We want to grow our own and then create those jobs. So we're also working really closely with like the McAllen Economic Development Center and the Mission Economic Development, Development Center uh, because they keep promising these jobs and we keep promising them to have more engineers. Um, you wanna kind of skip through? So we have um, civil engineering, we have aerospace engineering, which is very, very popular right now, especially in the Brownsville area because of SpaceX breaking ground here. Um, mechanical engineering, industrial, marine engineering, electrical, electronic game design. Our robotics is also very, very, very popular with the middle school kids. And chemical engineering, I think environmental, and that is the last one. Um, are there any questions? Did I go too fast? I got a few for you. Mm -hmm. uh, 
So just to kind of understand uh, your uh, uh, the program, uh, is this a for-profit or non-profit? It is a for-profit. For um, we do have our several nonprofit partners, but we are for profit. Yeah, that's okay. I'm from the business school, so no problem. For profit educational group. Uh, so, who developed your curriculum? How long has this been around? So, it's been around since 2009. It is a franchise, so it is. It was um, built in uh, Fredericksburg, Virginia. Um, in they send us everything. So, corp our corporate offices are in Virginia, and they send us the majority of our stuff. Now I have a couple of staff members and we are actually look we are expanding our high school curriculum because we have so many kids. The reason we ended up opening up the center this soon, I wanted to wait, was because we parents would see us on Facebook or they would see us at places and then they'd ask, well where can I send my student? So the demand was there, so we said, fine, we'll open the center now, and now we're getting high school students that want to come and participate, but we're building that curriculum. A lot of it um, is really just, we've been pulling the teaks and we've been pulling um, all of that, and we're, we're in the works. So uh, you're the local franchisee? Yes. Cool. Congratulations. It's been a challenge. This is my 10th year, believe it or not, I was just sharing with Omo. This is my 10th year in public education. Um, I graduated high school very early. I went to college. And I started teaching by the time I was 21. The last two years in public education, I was a counselor. And I noticed just that big gap and that just hatred against math and science that kids had. And I was the enemy every time I said, I'm going to put you in a graphics class or I'm going to put you in an engineering, a pre-engineering. And it was like, why? Send me to ag or put me in cosmetology, which is, they're perfectly good trades. But, you know, I would tell the kids, who am I to tell you that that's how far you can get? I'm going to put you in an engineering class. Hopefully this will spark some kind of, kind of interest and you'll want to do something with it. Um, no, but I did meet him. Uh, we have two very different, we have very, very different robots. Um, we do all of our, our are off of the uh, Lego, the Mindstorms. We use the Lego Mindstorms. I know uh, Ray here builds his own robot, which is really neat. A lot like the Da Vinci robot. <laughs> so uh, given what you're doing, uh, have you met Susan Valverde from? Yes, we actually have a partnership with Susan. I was gonna say, it's kind of a natural thing. Yes, so I actually worked with Susan for three years. Um, so she, we do use the Sylvan Center in Brownsville the only stop right there is that we can only service the kids that are Sylvan students until we open up our own location. Um, we just recently partnered up with STC also, so we'll be having classes in Star County. We have a lot of students from the Star County area that also are parents that express a lot of interest in rather than having them drive all the way to McAllen, we said we'll come to you. And Dr. Reyna was very helpful. I was going to say Mario was fantastic. Yes. So he was actually my person of contact, and he gave us a room. So we can, we'll be having those classes. They start, I think, in the next week, November 1st. Or, oh my gosh, Saturday. <laughs> they start on Saturday. So uh, do you have any relationship with our College of uh, Engineering and Computer Science here? No, I don't. I did reach out to the, I don't know if it's, is it Dr. Gonzalez? I did reach out to him um, a couple of months ago. Uh, but it was just more just conversation. Um, I think, yeah, well, and I think what happened is that the U university offers children camps during the summer. So it was more like, well, you're my competition. If I partner up with you, you're going to take my kids. I said, no, no, we're year round. Give me volunteers or send me interns. So uh, the guy who runs those summer programs primarily, we have a bunch of them who do it, is uh, Stephen Crown. And, uh, you should talk to him, I'm sure. Uh, okay. It'd be uh, it'd be a interesting person to work with also. Given similar goals. Yes. Is he here? The UTPA? Like yes. Stephen Crown. Yes, ma'am. All right. Uh, these students that you are going to be working with, you're recruiting them from partner schools? Yes and no. They should go to a partner school first, and then they can get involved with you. They do not go directly to you. Starting November 5th, they will come directly to us. So everybody, we have a little bit over 2,000 students that we work with right now, 
and those are just through the partner schools. And those would be after school programs? Yes. Now, when you're partnering with a school, then I assume that there is more of an interface and coordination with what they and you are doing? Yes, and all of our, but even if they come to us, our standards are, the, if they're at a traditional public school, it's the same, the same standard that they're doing in school. This is just a little bit extra um, at, with us. When we partner with them, um, it's through a grant. So it, every campus has a certain number of funds and a certain number of students that we can service. So it's different at every campus. And with whom are you partnered? South Texas ISD? No. Uh, Currently, right now, Currently, right now, we're at the Idea Public Schools, um, uh, McAllen ISD and Mission ISD. McAllen. McAllen, McAllen, McAllen ISD. and Mission. Which school is uh, Rayburn Elementary and Milam. Rayburn and Milam. And then at Mission, we have Castro Elementary. Okay. All right, so uh, if students are involved, are students at those schools, then they can there's a person that the principal has already assigned at every campus and that's how they come to us so they go through their campus administrator and then the campus administrator gets the rosters of the students so that's how and did Palm Fest get you any additional contact? yes we did get a lot of lot of uh, leads from Palm Fest we were at Palm Fest this year um, so we got a lot of good leads for the center because now um, we have to worry about filling the center up now. Oh. Uh, so we need, a, you know, just numbers wise, we need quite a few. We have a, yes. Um, I'm like um, my friend to the back of me, I'm not crazy about um, for profit education, but if I wanted to get more information about um, engineering for kids and uh, um, I guess uh, maybe volunteering or, or helping out or looking for part-time work or something like that. I can contact that number for general information? Yes, um, I can give you my card and actually all my information is on this flyer as well, but I'll give you my card. Uh, you know, and if you know others, we are, um, I think, I guess, at last an entrepreneur and like a very fresh in, into starting a business, everyone has those higher hiccups. So we are definitely looking for people that are computer savvy, that are interested in science and math, not just children. Um, that can be taught. I do believe that teaching can be taught, but if you don't know the content, you're no good. <laughs> so you really need to know science and math. And we actually have one of our teachers here. I'm so happy to see him here, Ryan. Um, he uh, just graduated from Full Sail University, so he has his uh, degree in game development. So he, he helps us a lot with our computer coding and our um, electronic game design. <laughs> Uh, well, we have 25, the class size is 25 students per three teachers. So then it just, right now we're going to actually have, at the center we're talking about three teachers, not a teacher and two aides. You're talking yes. about three teachers. We that. currently don't have any uh, co-teachers, so if any college students are in here looking for part-time work, uh, We'll take you. <laughs> um, so yeah, we do. Um, we don't have any co-teachers currently, but that's something that I'm going to be staffing uh, for co-teachers just to help assist with materials and stuff like that. The franchising process. And did you have any difficulties? Um, it's definitely interesting. You know, if anyone is thinking about going that route, it, it, it's a long process. It takes a, at least a good year. You have to submit. You know credit checks and bank statements and business plans um, before you get approved. You go through this whole, and then you have to fly up to wherever your home hub is, and you do an interview, and then what you have to wait a couple of weeks to see whether or not they're going to accept you to give you that, um, the license, really. So it took about a good year, year and a half, maybe. Good. 
the six weeks course typically cost? Uh, the, well, it varies. So they're anywhere between, for the entire six week program, for two hours once a week, it's between $125 and $300. Um, so I think if you break it up, it's like, it could be as low as you know, a couple, 20 bucks, $20, 13 It depends on the school. Oh, yes. Uh, are there any metrics now uh, for specifically these types of programs for outcomes all the way through uh, higher education? Or is it still to have that kind of data? About? Mine, from my, my, or just in general? Yes. In general, there is. Um, you know, you can pretty much, uh, you know, kind of follow everything and, and grab all sorts of data, but there is. Um, what's the, what's the general, what are the names of the general trends? What you see. Outcomes, I guess, through, through the university level. Is it well, looking at just the statistics off of all of that is just if a student has, and it's like anything, I guess, it's if that student has that extra push, that extra enrichment, they're three times more likely to finish or you know stay on track finish high school on time go off to seek a post-secondary education um, versus the student that didn't um, or the campus that didn't offer it um, and you it's just kind of you know I just had this discussion not too long ago with a professor and he we were looking through data and you can see the gap every every year that a new test is implemented and it goes back, you know, in third in third grade in, or in elementary, teachers are self-contained, so they have to teach every single subject. So like in fourth grade or in third grade where writing isn't taught, they focus just on teaching longer hours of reading and math, but then they feel it. It's like that tax you didn't pay. They feel it in fourth grade when the writing scores come in and they're really low because then they try to kind of cramp everything in there. And it happens also in fifth grade with science because they focused fourth grade. Now they added writing, reading, and math, and they didn't really teach any science. And then science, fifth grade comes along, kids test, and they bomb the test because they were never exposed to science in kinder, first, second, or third. If I have a kid in one of those schools that you just mentioned, how do I get them in the after-class program, and is there a cost for them? Uh, which campus? Well, let's say you mentioned uh, Milo, I think. Those, there is a there is a fee. Um, the contact person is the the assistant principal or the president of the PTA. Um, at the idea sc idea schools are the only is the only district right now where the parent does not pay any fee. Um, and the Horizon Montessori School. Um, they have grants because they did apply early on and they got federal funds. The, they don't, the parent doesn't pay. There is actually, I take that back, there's one idea campus that the parent, the way that they did it is they feel the parent will be more invested if some of their money came in, so they pay half and half. So the parent pays half of the program and the school pays the other half. Um, and that was just more just the parents came up with that one.